Good morning, traders. This is Brad Matheny. Today is the 18th of February, Saturday morning, very early. This is the Mint.com uh, TT Scanner Hot List video. Before we get started, I want to remind you to visit Mint.com. Uh, check out what I do. Learn how I can help you make better trading decisions. Learn how my research can help you and learn how my advanced trading tools can really assist you in understanding and profiting from the markets. When you consider what I offer, a single source solution that delivers all of this content to you, uh, the quantitative predictive modeling, the proprietary macro micro analysis, the proprietary daily and, and weekly swing trade algos, custom index and macro analysis, risk protection, dynamic asset allocation, and clear actionable trading triggers. It's really an incredible value for what you're doing. Give you an example, last week was very powerful. I'm receiving members, uh, comments from members that they had their best week last week. Uh, and we'll go over that in, the, uh, in a member appreciation video probably this weekend. Uh, but again, pay attention to what you get. This is the Expert Growth member page. Um, you get a lot of information here. I'm trying to clean this up a little bit. I'm not graphically oriented. So when I set this up, I set everything up across the menus. Uh, you can see that we get uh, you get member updates. You get member resources, videos, custom indexes, hot lists, uh, uh, SPY cycle patterns, meant live trades, the message board. And pretty much every week you come out here, you take a look at the uh, updates. Then you go to the video analysis. This is where you see all of the updated videos that you can take a look at. This is done every weekend for you. And then of course, there's more uh, resources for you, the custom indexes, which are also uh, provided to you every week, preparing you for what's going on during the week. Now we've also started uh, uh, what may become a Discord channel. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for this, but remember, I'm trying to focus on doing the research and providing the tools for you to make decisions. So what I have done is, and let me show you this, what I have done is created this sample setup in TradingView that allows you to essentially learn to make better decisions. So this is an example of what took place on Friday. Uh, if you were following me, I had called for a deeper decline uh, to take place. We had an inside breakaway bar that took place on Thursday. That was this move. Then Thursday night, I created a video warning that we could see the SPY open around 404, 405. Uh, possibly, and if we did, we could see a slight reversion to the upside. Now, we didn't see the massive reversion. This was just before the market closed, uh, but it did end up coming up here to 407 at the end of the day, uh, and uh, it was a pretty good day. I created this chart for members to understand how to trade. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a couple uh, of indicators, this uh, uh, TT3 MACD strategy is a very simple strategy that catches these rotations, kind of shows you the broader cycle trend. Then we have a linear regression channel. This is on a Heikinashi chart. Well, this is a regular SPY five minute chart with a linear regression channel. And the point behind this is to allow you to see channeling, price trending and channeling very efficiently. Uh, and then we have this uh, th uh, wave trend 3D which I like, it catches these uh, cycle trends and rotations. So this is a bit more of a short-term rotation. And then down here, we have a Donchian trend ribbon. And I, I do like the Donchian higher highs, higher lows. I want you to understand that that is a process of uh, Fibonacci price theory that is critical to understand. So you can see here, we moved into green trending over here after being red most of the day. This gave us a very clear indication that we were not looking for any opportunities until we finally get it into the, got into this weakening trend here and went green. That gave us the opportunity for the reversion trade to the upside. Now, of course, this is a five minute chart. Moving down to a one minute chart would have given us a lot of different opportunities throughout this rotation. And moving to a, a 10 or 15 minute chart may have not given us a whole lot of opportunities at all. 
But the idea here is to allow you to make decisions, to learn how to trade efficiently using my research and my SPY cycle patterns. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, is we are going to go to the TT Scanner Hot List. TT Scanner Hot Lists are weekly swing trading signals. We have, as we continue to flag out, let me come over here and show you first. This is the SPY daily chart. As we continue to flag out in this pattern, you can see these yellow lines that I've drawn here. We are essentially reaching an intermediate peak. We've come back down. If you count this, we have essentially a one. We could call this two. I, I am calling this two right now. Three, four, and I believe we're going to move out here to five. Alternately, we have one, two, three, four, five, if it sets up this way. This inverted hammer was very telling. This uh, uh, move down here to 405 and a move back above it was very telling that the support level is trying to hold. <clears throat> Next week, we'll probably see some sort of a move back up here to 411, possibly 410 and a half. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we will eventually apex out here around the 23rd, 22nd, 24th uh, of February, which is going to be where the real volatility starts. And I believe we're going to see some sort of a resolution to the upside, which, as you can see, as I'm trying to shrink this a little bit, is going to potentially move us into the uh, 435, 436 area up in this area. So we have been flagging out. Again, if I come here and show you how we have moved into a sideways flagging formation, it's kind of hard to see on the daily chart, but I will convert this to a weekly. And it will become much more evident that from basically here, you can see how we've got this deep bottom, we've rallied back up, we've got an A, B, C pattern. We still technically need to get a little bit higher up into this 424 area, maybe a little higher up in this 430, 435 area, which could be a bigger A, B, C move, which will eventually roll over into a downward cycle, which will be a wave two. Now wave two, we call this wave one, if we move back down into a wave two cycle, we could be back in this 410, 405 area at the end of a wave two, which I think is gonna happen sometime over here in May, June, uh, possibly early July. So you can see I've drawn it here. We're in an uptrend. We're probably going to, to 435, 436, rolling potentially downward to 410, 405 again, likely coming down into this support channel or this lower uh, line support channel. And uh, this is basically the layout that I have been uh, promoting and talking to you about for many months. So we are in this cycle. We've got a new high here. This was a breakout to a new high. We are stalling here. This is good in sense. We have one, two, three, four, and now we're looking at a five wave. Or you can just count it in a broad scope. One, two, three, potentially moving up into this area or higher. Um, and we need to understand that uh, this could condense down into this area, 402, 404, which we've already got a low here. So this could be essentially uh, a one. And then we would count this as a two, three, four. So this is one, two, and then we have an A, B, C, D, E, three. And then we have a pullback and then we have potentially a wave five. So this would be short little impulse wave one pull back to two this becomes our wave two low this becomes an a b c pattern here possibly forming into a d e this would be wave three from this low to potentially this high or some new high out here this then becomes a wave d correction and this becomes a wave uh e wave fifth wave rally I don't believe that fifth wave rally is going to occur until the second half of 2023. But time will tell. And that's where, where my research is really valuable, is understanding where we're at, being able to read these signals, being able to prepare and trade 
you know, on a five minute or a 10 minute or a daily or a weekly or a swing trade or even your uh, retirement account. This is where my research is so valuable. Um, I give you very clear indications of what's coming. I give you uh, daily pattern setups for the SBY. Uh, and then you use your skills and research to be able to go ahead and trade. And that's again why I'm providing this type of a setup here is to help you become, uh, here's another earlier setup. Uh, you can see here, is, is this a higher low waiting for confirmation? So we had a higher low set up. We had a boundary set up between uh, lowest lows and, and highest highs. The same thing set up back over here. This is a Heikinashi chart. This is a candlestick chart. This is a higher low set up. This was earlier in the day. I was warning everyone, is this it? We need these to flip to bullish to actually confirm this trend before we get too aggressive here. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. These eventually flipped to bullish. And we move from this 405.32 area all the way up to the 407 area. Uh, and it probably would have likely trended a bit higher if we had, uh, you know, a little bit more time. This was a big reversion trade that set up on Friday. But again, all of it is available at Mint.com. And I just want to urge you to come over to Mint.com, check it out. Um, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you become a better trader. And it's just a matter of time if you follow my research that you will start to become more skilled at using um, Fibonacci price theory, Elliott wave, advanced uh, technology, and be able to trade very efficiently. Okay, so now let's go back to the TT scanner hot list and get this done. So as we're flagging out, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to get a lot of triggers. That's just the way it works on a weekly swing trading system. We have moved downward. We did see a bunch of short trades. We're starting to move back into a sideways consolidation. This is what I've been warning you now for two or three or four months now. Um, as we move into this sideways channel, um, this broad flagging formation, we're likely to see one more move between now and uh, April to the upside. And that peak in April could come somewhere between March 27th, hypothetically. Let's call it March 20th and April 20th. I think we're going to have a peak in price trends right in that area. And uh, then we're gonna roll over into a wave, a broader wave two correction. So we have to be aware that we have a couple of signals here. This is the value list. You can tell right here, value stock list. Uh, we had a new trigger in Omnicon Group one week ago. It's up 2.38%. Uh, and let me move this over here. We had, oops. We had a uh, trigger eight weeks ago in Caterpillar. It's up 5.94%, hit the first target. Had a trigger in Smuckers, a long trigger 12 weeks ago. It's up 4.35%. Had a trigger in tra Travelers uh, 15 weeks ago. It's up 2.11%. Uh, and then we had a trigger here 14 weeks ago in the Principal Financial Group. It's up 11.19%. These indicate that our first targets have been hit. And what I've been telling clients and members is to focus on target one. So in this type of scenario, we're in a sideways trending market. You don't want to get married to long-term trades here, especially in this sideways volatile price trending. If you're taking these triggers, properly allocate for risk levels. Determine how much you're willing to risk on the trade based on the stop price over here. So if you're only able to risk $1,000, don't trade uh, more uh, capital than what would equate to $1,000 with the original stop. And then literally pull 60, 65, 70% off on target one. The purpose behind this is that we're not go likely going to see a lot of target twos hit in this sideways trending. Now, this adaptive TT scanner strategy will attempt to adjust these targets based on range factoring, uh, but we are in a sideways congesting market. We do have uh, quite a bit of volatility. What you wanna try to do is look at these first targets, even if they're two, two and a half, three, three and a half percent, you wanna look at these as our primary objective until we get into some sort of a bigger trending market. And we're just not in that bigger trending market yet. Okay, so no new triggers. We had one flat trigger here on PFG, which is fine. Uh, so we got out of this trade. We're still holding these. And like I said, the way this works 
is we're either going to stay in a trade for 8, 10, 12 weeks normally or longer uh, and start to hit our targets, or we'll get into a trade and maybe out of it over two or three weeks uh, with a moderate degree of risk. So understand that the risk factor here, we got in here at 98.50. Our stop is 97.02, 14 weeks old. We've already hit quite a bit of targets. Our current price is 109.52. So we're in the middle of our target range here. Um, this is a pretty good trade. You know, we got in at uh, uh, 98.50, we're at 109. This is actually 11% profit on this trade. It's pretty good, you know, and that's what these are designed to do. There are periods where these get chopped up a little, which is why you have to learn to uh, protect your capital and, and essentially move away from excessive risk when the market is trading in a sideways channel, kind of like it is today. Okay, next, we, let's go to the inverse. The inverse channel has a number of flat triggers. So we have a flat trigger in SVXY. We have a flat trigger in HDGE. We have a couple of shorts. Remember, inverse shorts are essentially the same as long. So when this is saying inverse are headed downward, this means the market is generally trending upward. So you have a couple of short triggers. This is two weeks old. Uh, it's up 9%, hasn't hit a target yet. You can see that this has got a, a ways to go with regard to a target level. You need to be aware, uh, especially in some of these uh, 3X ETFs, when the target range is 40 or 50% away from current price, you need to be aware that you can almost cut these in, in half, meaning from our entry price to our target price, <clears throat> cut it in half, so that'd be $5 to two, uh, 270 That'd probably put our target right around three, if I do the math right, like 385, um, simply because these 3X inverse ETFs, um, they can get a little like this one. Uh, we got in at, at 832 on this Yang index, and the target is uh, 20 cents and minus 768. Uh, now, why is this happening? This is because it's based on range. It determines how much range on a weekly basis is available to the downside, and this is telling us that We've had so much activity in this scenario that we're actually looking for negative targets. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade at these levels. Um, you can see we're off quite a bit on this, uh, but again, I would be looking for targets somewhere in the in the realm of you know six and a quarter, uh, maybe six on the lower target. But when you get into you know real solid numbers like these. We have an entry price of 1071, target price of 904 and 743. These are solid. Here's an entry price of uh, 2458. Uh, In-trade profit is 13 uh, percent, almost 14. First target is nine. Lowest target is minus 478. You know, this is again one of those scenarios where the ranging of the activity over the last 12, 15 months has prompted a negative number. We would literally be looking to, to move these numbers into more realistic territory. So you would hypothetically take this number and this number, I'm just gonna round it 25 to 10. And what you would do is you would uh, take the difference, which is 15, uh, cut it in half, seven and a half. And you, you basically you'd be looking for about a, a $17 target uh, for the first target, and then maybe a, a $12 uh, target on uh, the second target and right now we've got 13% in the trade we're down uh, from the entry about two three dollars reality is you want to you want to adjust these efficiently and I'll probably go in and try to fix this uh, in the code okay the core list no new triggers we still have the uh, marijuana short trigger we're up 44% in the short trigger uh, this is going downward. Uh, it is a beautiful trade. It's been in there for 40 weeks. Got to love it. Uh, and then XLE, we had uh, an OIH, I believe, trade in here uh, that looks like it exited, but we've got 57 weeks here. Oil is going to continue downward, in my opinion. So this is just a matter of time before this gets exited out um, and no new triggers. So you notice we're not seeing a whole lot of triggers this week. Uh, and then this is 211. Where's the other?
let me come over here, folks. Make sure I got the right one. Core. Oops. So we have value, core inverse, core, and then we go to value. So let me go copy this one. Twenty one two seventeen. There we go. This is the one I was missing. I didn't have it in my folder. So let me move this over here. This is the main TT scanner uh, hot list. And what we're looking at here is we have no new triggers. We have one flat trigger in ITA, so this one went flat. We have one trigger here in XOP that's been long for 57 weeks. We are moving into bullish territory. Um, we are likely going to flatten out, like I said, through about the 22nd, 23rd of February, then move into a bullish trending scenario. So get ready. We could get a nice little pop, uh, maybe 7 8% to the upside, but we're getting no new triggers on the TT scanner hot list for this week. And that's actually a good sign. Right now, we don't need to worry about anything. We're getting no new trend triggers. We're flagging out. We're in a contraction phase right now that I, I believe is going to bottom out around the 23rd, 24th of February and then start to move uh, quite a bit higher. But again, this is telling us that the markets are transitioning away from uh, away from weakness, moving back into potentially a bullish trend. Everything is playing out just like I suspect. We're going to be looking at real opportunities for these TT scanner hot lists come June, July. That's where I believe the real opportunity is going to line up for big, broad, upward cycle trends. In the meantime, like I said, keep trading small amounts. If you're following any new signals on here, keep your risks low and focus on your target one. If target one, if you pull 60, 70, 75% off at target one and move your stop efficiently, you can still find decent swing trades with these TT scanner hot lists. But remember, these are weekly. So they're not, they're, they're slower. They're designed to be slower. They're designed to give you bigger opportunity. They're designed to hold positions 20, 30, 50 weeks or more. Uh, and we're really looking for the market to, finish transitioning throughout the end of 2023 and maybe part of 2024. Now, go to my uh, custom index um, video to learn what's going on. Visit my YouTube channel. And remember, back over here, you have on my website, down near the bottom, you can go to my YouTube channel or my trading view or Twitter or Telegram. YouTube is probably the best. You click here. You go to my YouTube channel. There's a ton of information for you here. And what I suggest you do is focus on the custom index. So here you see the TT scanner hot list, the rotational modeling system. And then we have over here the custom index video. They're color coded slightly. This is the custom index. It's always labeled custom index and global market sentiment. This will tell you what's going on. This is the one from the week before. Uh, but this is the custom index video. And what I want you to realize is that what we have going into right now, we're in a consolidation phase. We are moving into a, a sideways trend. We need to stay cautious and stay aware of what's taking place with our capital. We need to protect our capital right now and wait for the setups to occur. Okay, guys, on to the next one.